All right, guys, welcome to John 10, Jesus the True Shepherd. Let's get right into this because this is a continuation of John 9. So we'll go down here. I'm going to read a couple of verses. Verse 39, and Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remains. They know the truth. They see. They know the truth. They know what's going on. They know who he is. They know what's happening. It's proved right there. And their sin remains on them. Most assuredly, John 10, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. How many people, we, we just talked about this, how many people are trying to find another way in? Even if they're trying to squeeze through a crack, they're trying. Which means, they're, you know, it's subtle, but they're trying. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. The sheep follow him, for they know his voice. It's very intimate and very specific, like we talked about this morning. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. We will know false doctrine when we hear it. We will know a liar when we hear him. We will know a false prophet, false teacher, when we hear it. And we will run from them. Run from them. <laughs> That's why we get attacked so much. Verse 6, Jesus used this illusion, or sorry, this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Jesus says, I am the door. Paul or John, in the very beginning of this book, says, He is the Word. The Word is the door. The Bible is the door. And that is evidenced very clearly by how many people do everything they can to stay out of, out of the Bible. <laughs> They're trying to enter the sheepfold by another way. By either coming up with their own doctrine or writing a new Bible, which many of them have done. Verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. What would be a more abundant life? More abundant here, since they like to misuse that scripture. More abundant here or more abundant in heaven? More abundant in heaven. I'm not going to have that much of an abundant life here. Some people will. I'm not going to have that, and I'm okay with it because I know that the, the abundance comes in heaven. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. It's a specific thing. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. This is an interesting statement here. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. He's talking about the other resurrections, the other groups of people that are going to be brought in, the other people that are going to get saved. Verse 17, Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Jesus, they didn't hang him on the cross, he went to the cross. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Therefore, there was division again among the Jews because of these sayings. Nails didn't hold him to the cross, loved it. And many of them said, He has a demon and is mad. Why do you listen to him? Others said, These are not the words 
of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of a child, or eyes of a blind? Now it was the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Verse 24. Here comes a, a great speech here. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. See, they know the scripture and he knows them too. They're struggling with this because they know who he is. But do you? But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep as I said to you. These men are condemned. Jews, they're condemned. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works I have shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. And because you, being a man, make yourself God. How funny that they're still arguing that today. Jews has never said he was God. They, they were convinced of it. Verse 34, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, and the scripture cannot be broken, and the scripture cannot be broken, to all those out there trying to do it, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. This is a great big indicator of who you're dealing with. What works are they doing? What is the works of the Father? He asked, that somebody asked him that. Lord, what are the works of the Father that we may do them? Believe. But if I do though you do not believe me. Believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to seize him, but he escaped out of their hand. And he went away again beyond the Jordan to the place where John was baptizing at first, and there he stayed. John was in probably in jail by this point. Then many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but all the things that John spoke about this man were true, and many believed in him there. So you can see the problem that was going on here. They knew who he was. They were very secure in, in their understanding of who he was. The problem was they were so hard-hearted and hard-headed and so stiff-necked and so blind, they didn't want, it, want him to be him. They knew what the scripture said more than anyone else. They were very aware. But conviction was hitting them because he was convicting them. And they didn't know what to do about it except to attack what was convicting them. And so they went after him. Don't you think that would have been something that would have caused some fear in their heart? Wait a minute. This guy, everything about him matches the scriptures. We need to dig a little deeper in this. Instead of trying to kill him, why don't we sit down and talk to him? Let's find out what's going on here. Nope, that wasn't their thing. They were trying to do everything they can to get rid of him. Because he was causing them problems. He was taking away their authority. He was undoing all the stuff that they had done to make them rich. They didn't like that. They didn't want him. He wasn't going to give them what they wanted. So, he's, he's doing what he does best. Laying the gauntlet down. And they're not able to pass through it. But the people who do want him, who are looking for him, hear what he says and believes. And they develop this intimate connection with him, this intimate understanding, just like we talked this morning. The other ones, they don't want it. They know the truth. They, they know the scriptures. They're looking at him. They, 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 what they see, they're like, okay, it matches. They know the truth. They don't want it to be true. This is a horrible problem today. Horrible problem. The, the world leaders know the things that they are doing are specifically mentioned in the Bible, referencing them specifically. Don't think for a second they don't know what the Bible says. They have religious advice. They know. And they're treading that path, knowing 
they're treading that path. And knowing what the ultimate end of that action is going to bring to them, they know it. They are fully aware of it. There's videos out there of them talking about it. They don't want it to be true. Even though they see it in writing, they don't want it to be true. They don't want it to happen the way it says it's going to happen. And it's so funny because they're still treading that path. Not even trying to change the course. They know it's true. They just don't want it to be. And so they're going to continue to do what they've been designated to do. Knowing full well what they're doing. On that final day, nobody will have an excuse. It's right there. It's amazing. And Jesus is telling them this. He's showing them this. And this is passing down generations. He's showing everybody this. Terrible, terrible state the world is in and has been in for a very long time. But the Lord's about to fix that. He's going to change that. And he's starting right here. Well, he started at the beginning, but he's really get, digging his heels in right here. Paying the debt for sin opened a door and changed the, di the, the dynamic completely. Good stuff. All right, guys, that was John 10. Tomorrow will be John 11, the death of Lazarus. And I don't know if he records it in here. Yep, the most powerful verse in the Bible, in my opinion, is verse 35. The most powerful verse. We'll get into that then. So have your tissues ready for tomorrow if you're going to watch the video because it might be a tearjerker. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.